Hey, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Silicon Valley, Santa Clara Convention Center. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. And this is the Cube, our flagship program. We go out the events, extract the signal from the noise, and I'm joined by co-host Jeff Kelly, chief analyst at Wikibon's Big Data Practice. And our next guest is Cube alumni Roger Levy, who's the VP of Marketing at Sky SQL. Welcome back to the Cube in a new role. Well, great. Always, always a pleasure to be here, and I'm also always amazed that you keep inviting me back, even <laughs> after the, the prior performances. So. <laughs> you did a great job at HP Cloud. You were at HP, and, and we had many discussions. You had a, a, a great career and continue to have a great career. Um, and Dave and I always joke, we love having you on because you bring a great veteran perspective while still in the trenches making things happen. So, you know, we always love to get that extract, that signal from your brain and share with the audience out there. So I want to get your take on a couple things. One is, um, uh, give us a quick update on what Sky SQL's doing uh, and your role there and, 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 and a little bit about the company because folks may or may not know uh, what's going on with Sky SQL. Great, I mean, I joined uh, Sky SQL just now, oh, it's almost my ninth week, so you know, really I know everything there is to know about the company. Uh, the overall direction of Sky is to be the commercializer uh, of the enterprise grade distribution of MariaDB. Uh, MariaDB is the next generation of MySQL. It was created uh, by the same uh, person, by Monty Widness, who did uh, MySQL, and he really wanted to continue uh, the innovation and the community-driven, community-led uh, development and innovation around relational databases. And then Sky was formed uh, in association with that to essentially be the company that can bring that out in a commercial form. Uh, what we're doing today is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a great week. We announced MariaDB 10, which is the community-produced version of the database on Monday, and simultaneous with that as Sky SQL, or Sky SQL for those who like to spell things, uh, we brought out what we call MariaDB Enterprise 2, which is our commercial enterprise grade distribution. So that includes a subscription for support, as well as a, a whole basket of other uh, services and bundled tools that come with it and available uh, from Sky SQL on a you know yearly subscription basis. So give us a take on the cloud market. Obviously, at HP Cloud, you were one of the key architects from scaling that up into a, a operation now going to a whole other level now um, at HP. Obviously, you got Amazon. You're familiar with what's going on in the cloud market. Um, cloud is the innovation engine. You're hearing that's that's mainly the, the I'm calling the printing press of this modern era. <laughs> but still, you need to have enterprises come in and manage that. And but what's under the hood of that engine of innovation is the data. And we we coined the term data first here in the cube. Uh, some say mobile first, some say cloud first, but there's no doubt cloud is going to be part of the future. Um, and, and, but under the hood, there's still some things that's work in progress, like databases, like Flash, that Gary Ornstein on earlier. What's your take on the cloud market and the transformation happening at some of the levels that we're seeing in the databases, in the Flash, in some of the components? It's, it's a great question, actually. It's, there, there's just so much interconnectivity between what's happening in cloud and what's happening in data management. I mean, one of the motivators, uh, you know, for me personally to make the transition from, you know, running the, you know, the HP public cloud into the database market is, quite frankly, it's all about data. You know, every time I would give a talk at the executive briefing center at HP, we always had one slide about every day, four exabytes of new data you know, is being created. And while a lot of that data, you know, will never be looked at again, will never be managed, will never be searched, uh, there is a huge amount of it that needs management and, and that creates tremendous opportunity for data management across all of its forms. You know, whether it's transactional, relational, whether it is, you know, what's being called uh, NoSQL, whether it is, you know, big data in terms of Hadoop derivatives or data warehousing, uh, there's just such tremendous need for efficient, effective data management solutions to help continue to drive the cloud. 
Uh, the cloud itself is providing great innovation. I mean, OpenStack, where I've spent a lot of time, I, I think is, is a tremendous example of hundreds of companies, thousands of developers all coming together in one large cooperative effort to move innovation forward in the cloud. Uh, and then companies like HP, companies like Rackspace and others, building commercial offerings, building you know, operational systems uh, around that. And you know, sort of one of the other, I think, great notes is you know, as we look at how we link these two, the Trove project, for instance, and in OpenStack, uh, you know, is currently based upon relational database technology, lots of opportunity uh, for us to continue you know, to drive innovation between both data and cloud you know, in a cooperative way. Talk about the, um, the developer's market because you, know, <laughs> you, can't, you can't bounce around Silicon Valley or around the world these days without hearing about everyone wants to win the developer community. Absolutely. Uh, MySQL obviously has been a big part of the evolution. We talked with Gary Orstein earlier, about a quarter of the uh, multi-database environments that you're seeing out there have a lot of MySQL programmers, hundreds of thousands of developers with MySQL, all kind of wanting to do more. Mm -hmm. So SQL's not going anywhere. People are putting SQL on top of NoSQL to roll up analytics, et cetera, automating it, DevOps, whatever you want to call it. Um, but there's an issue around oversaturating the developer market. What is the key developer issues that you're seeing out there right now for the innovation cycle that we're seeing? I mean, obviously mobile, you've seen app developers, okay, that's cool. But really, there's some stuff going on at the data level was pretty right. strategic. Can you comment on that? Yeah, I mean, I think a, a great example, you know, everyone talks about, you know, NoSQL, a lot of people, you know, look at the example uh, of Mongo, and there's a lesson to be learned there. You know, in, in my opinion, what has made MongoDB successful is really thinking about the core needs of the developer. Someone who's building a mobile app, someone who's building a, a, a web scale app, and really coming at it from their perspective, providing a technology that provides the feature functionality, but also makes it very much uh, a part of what a developer is used to. You know, being able to communicate with a database in JSON, looking at it as you know more of a large data structure than needing to know schemas and, and other bits and pieces. And I think there's lessons for us to be learned within the relational market. You know, as we've launched MariaDB 10, uh, we've done a number of things now to start bringing you know, more and more interoperability between the relational database space and the non-relational database space. So we've introduced, for instance, uh, what I'll call a gateway. It's actually called the Cassandra engine, but it's a gateway between MariaDB and Cassandra. So if you have uh, a primary transaction-based application running in MariaDB, but you happen to be using Cassandra for another part of your application, you can actually read and write to your Cassandra database through MariaDB using this gateway. So we're beginning to bring interoperability. The, the, and the analog I love is we are bringing hybrid database. Just the way uh, in HP we did a lot to you know, really be pioneers in a concept of a hybrid cloud between public and private. One of the things that we really see at SkySQL is a great opportunity in it. It really brings us back into providing the developers the full set of tools they need, is being able to better allow the developer to use the right tool for the right thing. So talk about the connecting to the NoSQL. Obviously the news I've seen on, with Maria uh, DB is to connect to NoSQL. No That's pretty big, so explain why you guys see that as a big deal. Well, it, it is big, I mean I think that for many people who go after a NoSQL solution, one of the things they learn uh, quickly is there is an awful lot of work to do to make that function appropriately with your application if you need any form of real transaction. And so what we offer is we offer a hybrid capability where you can build a non-relational, non, you know, unstructured capability within, you know, for instance, Cassandra build your transaction-oriented part of your application in Maria, and bridge them together through the gateway. And this really is you know, the right tool for the right job. You don't use a wrench you know, to, to, to try to hammer a nail, and although I've done that you know, a few times, I think we all have, it doesn't give you the best results and, or finish on, on the wood that you're, <laughs> you're working on. And then within the database itself, we've introduced concepts uh, such as dynamic columns. You know, classical relational database, the number of columns per row is fixed. But we now have a capability that allows you to have 
uh, essentially a dynamic number of columns associated with the different rows. So you can put more unstructured data in directly into your MariaDB database. And really, you know, just back to the, the more you know, general concept of what the developers are looking for, uh, there's a number of things. And MariaDB 10, uh, I think, is, is really going far to address them. Uh, one of them is scalability in HA. Uh, so many new features that have gone into the database, uh, parallel you know, slave replication that allows you to use multiple threads for schema, uh, multi-source replication, and many, many other features that really get to this aspect of scalability. And you know, last week there was a, a great announcement in the community from you know, the combination of Google, Facebook, Twitter, you know, LinkedIn around uh, web scale SQL. And you know, I think that puts to rest any questions about whether relational database technologies to scale. Because if you've got a scale issue greater than a Google or a Facebook, uh, you know, we've, we've yet to you know, uh, meet those sorts of challenges. A billion you know, user, million and millions and millions of row per second insert into a database you know, that are being achieved on relational database technology today. Uh, so you know, developers don't have to go and think about losing the benefits of ACID, losing the benefits of a transactional oriented database just for the sake of worrying about will they scale. Roger, is there, a, is there kind of a, an unnecessary war going on in the developer community, NoSQL versus SQL? I mean, are you finding uh, that more education needs to happen? Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of talk, uh, you know, on Twitter and elsewhere in the, the social web about uh, kind of the two camps, but it sounds like Clearly, it's, it's about picking the right technology for the right job and mapping it to the business requirement. Is there, what, what are you sensing in the developer community? Is that tied, was there kind of this irrational exuberance around NoSQL and then now it's kind of, people kind of coming to the realization that actually it's going to be a hybrid model going forward? I think it's the same thing we see around many technologies, right? There is the, the excitement of a new shiny object that's going to solve all your problems. And you know, quite frankly, it solves a number of very specific things. Uh, but then when you really get down into the details, you find, you know, as with most technologies, the hard parts, the things that, you know, they didn't tell you when you, you know, went uh, and committed and bought the thing uh, in the first place. So I don't necessarily think there's a, a war, but there's a great need for education uh, out there in terms of what are the appropriate use cases, what are the design principles, uh, you know, around the different technology bases, whether it's, you know, relational or, uh, unstructured technologies, you know, such as Mongo. So, so what are you doing to kind of keep uh, keep your finger on the pulse of that developer community and kind of help with that 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 job of educating uh, developers in the wider community around, um, you know, when to use which technology and, and and then and also how you respond to some of their needs. You mentioned earlier you've got to put the developer first. So, how do you do that? How do you keep your finger on the pulse of what's important to them? So, I mean, we have as as you know, do many you know companies a significant number of developers ourselves that are out there in the community that are you know, keeping in touch with what's going on across different database technologies. Uh, and quite frankly, we also do it through our customers, right? Our, our, many of our customers use multiple technologies, and by working with them, by working with the developers and the engineers within you know, uh, those companies, uh, we learn and they learn. And you know, we continue to, to reach out to developer communities. Opportunities like Percona Live are great. You know, in the talks and the tutorials we're doing here, uh, we get to reach out to a very significant you know, portion uh, of the highly influential you know, developer and engineering community uh, around databases. So yeah, so talk a little bit more about the community uh, around uh, MariaDB. Uh, what what is the state of that community today? Um, and I, uh, you know, you're somewhat new to it, uh, having just yep. joined uh, SkySQL. What are your initial impressions? Uh, my initial impressions is extremely vibrant. I mean, first of all, the the real core of the community are people who have been working on MySQL for you know since it existed. Right? It starts with Monty, who is the founder uh, of MySQL and now the creator uh, of MariaDB. So you know, it's sort of the the, the patriarch. Uh, and you know, 25, 30 plus of the key engineers who really created uh, MySQL and have now taken their passion for database work into MariaDB. And then the the extended community. Uh, you know, we're working with companies, you know, like Google, uh, like Taibo over in China, that you know are very, very active in you know the community and adding to it. And uh, you know, I, I contrast it to the, to the Linux community, right? When uh, 
right now, Linux is dominated by one or two, maybe three very, very large companies. Uh, this is still a community which has a, a strong vibrancy. I mean, for instance, uh, we've just, uh, you know, in MariaDB 10, introduced something called the Spider Engine, which is for uh, sharding. I mean, that was done by one individual in Japan. You know, not associated with Oracle, not associated with Sky. Just someone who, you know, had a real interest in building this technology. And we're getting, you know, more and more and more uh, of those types of people wanting a place to innovate. You know, after MySQL had been acquired, and with some of the, uh, the changes in policy and licensing that occurred, you know, some folks that had been very active in community and open source contribution into databases, you know, really didn't have a place to go. Uh, now with MariaDB, the MariaDB Foundation, you know, there's a whole new community here that uh, people have begun to engage in. Uh, and I think it's, uh, you know, it's really a start. You know, it's a relatively, you know, early stage, but uh, very, very, very encouraging and very promising. Roger, give us a quick update. I want to end the segment, get you the last word on the status of the company funding. Can you share some specifics? Sure. Uh, what are you guys trying to do, your objectives, number of employees? Just give us a quick data dump on, on that. Sure. Topic. I mean, you know, really, really simply, uh, the company is roughly around 70, 75 employees. Uh, a very, very large number of those are engineers either in uh, development or within our consulting and support organization. Uh, we just recently, you know, raised a 20 million uh, funding round uh, a couple months ago from, you know, some very uh, strong uh, organizations such as uh, Intel themselves, uh, Open Ocean, which is a VC that funds uh, heavily into open source based uh, companies, uh, California Technology Ventures. Uh, so we've got some very, very good uh, backing. We've got, you know, the the money to to go and. You know, where we're really heading is having the best of the best. So our view is MariaDB will be the best of the best choice within the relational database market. Uh, we will bring in our own innovative contributions and we'll also seek out work that's going on uh, within MySQL, work that's going on uh, within WebScale SQL and other places and bring them all together, hardened, tested, enterprise grade and curated and, you know, we're building our business model around the subscription business for that. Tell us through a, a prediction or a future vision. And this is, I'm not going to hold it to you because it's a future <laughs> prediction. Yeah, well, I get, it'll, it'll all hold it to you at the end of the day. But you've been around the block. You've seen many innovation cycles coming. Inflection point we're seeing now is mm -hmm. clearly the key. Data first is a term we coined here in the cube. Mobile first is what's buzzed about. Cloud first, Microsoft CEO is talking about. But all the actions happening at the data, this data layer, what people are doing with data, how data is handled, how Facebook are using data, how Twitter and you know, web scale, SQL, is, is showing that the companies that are using data as an asset, um, as oil, if you will, to power the, the generators of, of innovation. Um, what, what's your vision? You've seen things come and go. Mm -hmm. What's your take out there around this data-centric, developer-focused, open-source collision? Well, I think it, it, you know, at the beginning end, it's all about data. Computing is a tool, data is asset. I mean, and I think we're just at the, the very beginnings of people realizing the incredible amount of power there is in data. I mean, we're seeing it now uh, with the explosion in data analytics, data science, and what people are able to do for their businesses, for nonprofit organizations, for governments, by harnessing what's there. And the need then of having you know, great solutions to allow you to collect, manipulate, store, and manage that, you know, really is where the, uh, the future is. And you know, I think database uh, community, database vendors, you know, really are at the center uh, of all of that. And hence my, you know, my excitement about where we are you know, our recent release of products and, and the future, you know, for Sky and, and quite frankly for the industry, you know, as a whole. Talk about enterprise grade cloud. How soon are we there? Are we there yet? Are we almost there? Is it early days? What's your take on that? And everyone's talking about enterprise grade Amazon, certainly sure. pumping that message hard. You got Rackspace with uh, OpenStack and HP, among others, driving that. IBM's got a cloud, got Cloud Foundry out there. Yeah, well, what, is, back, what does enterprise you know, grade mean? Well, back at back at you know HP, we pretty much put a differentiator on our cloud as enterprise grade, and 
And that's really because the, the customers that HP serves were the, you know, the top 2,000, 10,000 you know, companies in the world that demanded a, you know, a high level of availability, a high level of reliability, and, and quite frankly, one of the other things enterprise grade means is, what's the total customer experience? And that's really where we were you know, putting a premium you know, on it uh, at HP. I think the reality is when you move past the emotion and you know, all of the, the, the interesting marketing, and you look at Amazon, you look at HP, you look at Rackspace, uh, most of the clouds in many cases are actually operating at or above what many enterprises are able to achieve themselves in their data center. Uh, you know, security issues in public clouds are well publicized, security issues in private data centers are not. Uh, same thing about performance issues and downtime. Uh, and so, you know, it's kind of a one-way evaluation. The public clouds are very much, you know, out there. They're, they're under constant scrutiny. And, you know, doing a good comparison between what's really available today and what people get in their, their private data, data centers are tough. But my own view is we are very much approaching the point where these clouds uh, are at or surpass what you can do in your own data center. It's a software-led infrastructure, software-defined data center, software-defined cloud, software-defined applications. Data is the new asset. We're here with Roger Levy, VP of Product Management at Sky SQL. Uh, this is theCUBE, our flagship program about the events extracted signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Kelly. Dave Vellante couldn't make it on this trip. He's out on the East Coast flying around, talking to customers and getting some stuff done, Jeff. So uh, we miss you, Dave. Dave, if you're watching, uh, we'll see you uh, next week. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.